going on today, guys? My name is Cody Piper, and it's good to see you today. Thank you for tuning in. We have a little bit of a different video planned for today. I'm not in my office. I'm actually going to be traveling around a little bit, filming from some different spots. But basically, I'm going to be taking you guys through a little story that I want to tell about the process of making my last short film. What we're going to do now is we're going to jump back in time a few days, and we're going to replay some of the actual scenes that took place as I'm making the short film. So check it out. All right guys, so we arrived at the location and you'll hear me say this in most of my videos, but you wanna make sure that you plan ahead. I wasn't able to plan ahead with this shoot as much as I wanted to, but I still did find out when the fireworks are going off, where they were gonna be shot off from. So I knew they were going off from this field right here. And I also knew this was gonna be a pretty big event. So I knew I needed to get here a little bit earlier and find a good parking spot. So I parked right up here, up front. You always wanna give yourself a little bit more time than you think you need as well, because things always go wrong on a film shoot and just kind of in life. Things are always gonna not go the way that you planned. So if you have a little bit extra time to troubleshoot that and problem solve, that's always super helpful. There's actually a saying in the film world, if you're early, you're on time. If you're on time, you're late. And if you're late, you're fired. So basically, you're just, you're always fired. So we shot our first scene over at the swing set, so we're gonna go check that out now. All right guys, so we're here at our swing set location shooting our first scene. And I'm sure most of you probably know that movies are not shot in chronological order in the way that you watch them. Usually they're shot all out of order to save time and money. What we did is we ended up shooting this scene first because we knew that there's gonna be a bunch of kids coming and they're gonna be hogging all the swings. So we wanted to get here before all the kids came. There's a couple of kids in the background, but it's fine. It didn't mess up the shot too much. And guys, shooting people on a swing set is actually like way harder than I thought it was gonna be. I thought it was gonna be pretty easy. There's like the sun set in the background, like every shot's gonna look amazing, but no, that's not what happened. We actually shot a bunch of shots that looked like crap and we chose the best ones that we could find to use for the film. I actually shot a swing set scene in an earlier film that I DP'd on. We were only shooting the guy's hand, so it was actually a lot easier to shoot because I'm just focusing on his hand and so it looked really cinematic. But when I've got two people swinging and kids in the background and trying to get a cool gimbal, it was just hard. It was really hard. The other thing that I made a mistake on is I brought my ND filter that was like $30 from Amazon, and it pretty much just ruined any scene I had that on. If you don't know what an ND filter is, that's basically like sunglasses for your camera. So you put that in front of your lens, or sometimes behind the lens, and that limits the light that's coming into the camera. So when you're shooting, you don't wanna have to change your shutter speed or your ISO or your f-stop if there's too much light coming in, because that's gonna change your image. So you put that ND filter in front of your lens, that knocks down the light. But the problem is, as soon as you put something over your lens, that's not an expensive piece of glass, it's just gonna ruin your image. So in my case, it did, it messed it up. So there's a lot of shots that I wasn't able to use because the ND filter was messed up. You can even see one shot where like the corner of the image looked all weird because of the variable ND filter. All right guys, we're finished with this scene. Let's go ahead and jump over to the parking lot and see how we got that opening shot. All right guys, so this is the location where we filmed our opening shot. We had a slow push in of our main actor and we had a large crowd in the background and then we came over top of his head and came back down in. Um, it didn't turn out exactly how I planned it, but there's some things that I have wrong with it and I'll explain that in a second. Um, but your opening shot of your film is super important, especially in today's age where people have super short attention spans. They're not gonna wanna keep watching something if the first shot is boring or it's moving slow. So be very intentional with your opening shots. It doesn't necessarily have to be super exciting or really over the top dramatic, but it has to be very intriguing to make people want to continue to watch your film. So like I said, the shot wasn't technically perfect. What I was going for was a push in and then I wanted to come over top. And when I got to the top, I'll show you the storyboard, but I wanted to be where it's like a perfect bird's eye view looking down. I just didn't get the monopod high enough and I didn't have enough time to try it to get it right. And then we came back down, the focus messed up a little bit. We had it on autofocus and so it gets a little warbly and it comes out of focus and then comes back in. And to me, it kind of messed up the shot. So if I had a chance to, I would have done another take, but we didn't have that luxury. But I would definitely recommend a wireless follow focus and somebody off camera actually pulling the focus on their own monitor. So that way you can hit the focus perfectly every time. You don't have to worry about the autofocus trying to find it or randomly catching something else in the background. So for our opening shot of Sparks, we wanted to set freaking bugs. We wanted to set the scene and show a big crowd of people. I wanted to show our lead actor in front of that crowd looking out at them, but I wanted him to be all alone. So I wanted that to be a direct opposite of the last shot that you see. So in the last shot, he's actually standing there with a girl who now he's just met and become friends with, and there's nobody in front of them. So it's almost like they're all alone. And that's what he wanted all along. So you can see the change from the first shot to the last shot. I didn't want this just to be a shot that's moving in and then cutting or cutting from the back to the front. I wanted it to be all one shot. So I was trying to think of something creative. I don't know if I exactly pulled it off, but I want to do something more creative than anything else in the film to make sure that people were intrigued and interested and wanted to see what's going to happen next. 
So those are the things that we wanted to establish, and I think we did an okay job, but I definitely learned some good lessons after shooting this one. So let's go ahead and jump into the field now. We're gonna catch our last couple scenes before we lose the sun. So now we're on to our final scene, the fireworks scene. I had no idea what was happening. I was just shooting stuff and hoping it was gonna work. So basically what happened was, is the original script called for a rooftop where they were gonna kind of escape to and go off away from everybody else, but we couldn't find a rooftop that would work for this. So we decided not to take that risk. We decided just to go ahead and shoot it and figure it out on the day. So the fireworks started going off. First of all, I have the wrong lens on the camera. All right, Jim, quick, I need to change that. And so I had to switch lenses really quick as soon as they started. Now I knew we were gonna have her disappearing, so I got some of those shots with her there and her gone, and I did one from behind, she was there and then she was gone. And then what we ended up doing was we had David leave the scene of the party because he was just sad because he wasn't with the girl anymore. He was just like, I'm just out, like I'm gonna leave. And so he sees homegirl standing there. And so I did some shots with her just like standing there, and then he's just standing there, and then they're just staring at each other, and they're just looking at each other. And it like felt cool in the moment because it was like a wide shot, staring fireworks and then when I got back and looked at the footage I'm like what the heck was I thinking I can't believe you've done this so I'm glad I had a little feeling on location after we shot that scene of like we should probably get some backup shots so what we ended up doing was we stopped that stop it get some help and then I got some shots of them from behind and I got the fireworks going off in the background them in the foreground so I knew I'd be able to use that either way and then they start watching the fireworks together and there's a little bit of a spark there so the title came from, you know, the fireworks, obviously, and then, you know, sparks fly. I definitely learned a lot from it. I don't hate how it turned out. I just don't like it. So I'm okay. Guys, I'm, I'm going to be okay. I promise I'm okay. I'm fine. No, really. Like, yeah, I'm fine. Doesn't doesn't bother me. So that's what happened. Just wanted to fill you guys in. Hopefully you guys can learn something from those mistakes that I made. So now that we're finished with the shooting, let's go ahead and jump into post-production. All right, so as you can see here, I'm editing in Adobe Premiere Pro. As I'm currently editing this, the project is due the next day at midnight. And I screen recorded my editing process and I didn't speed up the footage at all, so this is me editing in real time. Whoop, just kidding. Anyways, so I wanted to show you guys how I did that sparks effect where the girl starts to disappear into sparks and kind of disintegrates out. So I saw a tutorial on how to do the Thanos disintegration from Avengers from the guys over at Cinecom, and I'll put a link in the description to that video if you want to check that out. But I ended up tweaking the tutorial a little bit from what they did to fit what I was trying to do, but their tutorial explains it really well, so I would recommend checking that out if you want to learn how to do this. Basically, their tutorial just shows you how to use the shatter effect inside of After Effects. But one thing that I couldn't figure out that took me the longest time is how to get it to apply to the right area of the frame. So what I had to do is I had to manipulate the force one option. And once I moved that and changed the gravity, everything seemed to work for me. So if you're having trouble, I would check out the force and the gravity. So the basic idea of how I got this effect is I took two different shots, as I was saying earlier, one with her there and one with her removed from the frame. And then I just applied that disintegration effect just to her and not to the rest of the frame. But yeah, from here, I'm just going to show you guys the time lapse of that process. And then after that, there's going to be a time lapse of how I did the thumbnail and the poster. So if you guys have any questions about specifics, please let me know in the comments and I'll try to answer those or try to put out a video if there's a lot of questions about the same thing. So yeah, thank you guys so much for checking out this video today. I appreciate that. Make sure to leave a like, comment, let me know what you guys think. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet. And for those of you who are just sitting around thinking about making something, get off your butt and go make it. Peace.
Yo, you actually stayed and watched the whole time lapse and got to the end of the video? You're awesome. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Just want to let you know, I feel the love.